So it was a, an early crisp morning of 1870, um, somewhere in the Latin district in Paris, and Pasteur was pissed. Um, one of his assistants, a lovely French chap by the name of Charles, had gone on holidays and just messed up his whole experiment. He was working at the time on a, a really specific bacteria that, that uh, produces cholera in, in chicken. And just the culture was spoiled. Charles didn't look after it. But Pasteur actually decided to still use the culture and inoculate the chicken with it. And something weird happened. The chicken didn't, didn't die. Um, and those were the first early steps towards vaccination. Um, and also, you know, the, the first early steps towards um, one century of war against microorganisms. From the late 1870s up to probably 1970, we've just, you know, had this ongoing war and, 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 and battle towards trying to control and eradicate all microorganisms. And what if, what if, we, if we were wrong? What, what's... You know what's um, what, what's happening. So, so th there's something really interesting that happened in, in the late uh, 1970s, which is we started to have new tools to look at those microorganisms, a gen genomics tool, right? And we found out that actually, you know, we're we mostly microorganisms. We, we we have more ten times more microorganisms in our body than our own human cells. You know, and what what, what does that? tell about us, what if we are mostly, you know, microorganisms? And, and going further, um, we, we understood that it's not only in our guts, but, you know, really everywhere on our, on our bodies. And not only the, the microorganisms are there, but they, they actually play really important roles, things that can go from, you know, your physical health to mental health, and, and we're still, you know, discovering all the influence that those small microorganisms can, can have on our, on our bodies. What if, if, if we're wrong with coffee? What if, you know, we, 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 we shouldn't consider just the bean or just the cherry or just the plant, but, you know, this, this uh, bundle that, that would be, you know, the plant and the microbiome that comes with it. And so that's what I want to talk a little bit about today, the coffee microbiome. I'm going to start somewhere where I think most of you don't really think about, which is the roots of the plant. So this is not a, unfortunately, this is not a coffee plant, it's a red hood seeds, but um, in, in the rhizosphere, like all the roots network of plants, there are a number of microorganisms that tightly interact with the plant and greatly contribute to the, to the plant health immunity. And the first ones are fungi, and those are called the, the microsphere around, around the, the root network. And you can actually guess a little bit here, like all these extensions are not actually the roots, but actual filamentous fungi that extend from the root and kind of extend the reach of the plant to capture nutrients. So they have really important uh, roles in capturing phosphorus, in capturing nitrogen uh, and other nutrients. So much so that about you know, 30% of the, the energy that the plant is gathering from the, from the sun is directed towards those fungi. And it, the plant is actually um, actively feeding the fungi so it can help, they can help um, it to you know, gather, gather nutrients. So we have fungi, we also have bacteria, um, and some of the bacteria are in those small nodules. And, and the bacteria also help a lot the plant with uh, gathering different, different nutrients, again, phosphorus, nitrogen. But they also, you know, actually produce plant hormones. They have a, a very important role in, in, in fruit maturity sometimes. Um, and they can also be used um, as, as biocontrol agents. So in, in, in crop sciences, people are, are starting to use and, and try to research um, how those, those microorganisms can, can really help the farmers um, make better, healthier plants that you know, also contrib contribute to, 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 to better fruits and, and better, better, better flavor. Then I want to talk about the, the, the cherry itself, the coffee cherry. And on the coffee cherry, you have about 16 million microorganisms per cherry that, that just live in there, right? And so when you dump the cherry in water, a lot of things are starting to, to happen, but it's mostly bacteria, then it's yeast, and then it's, it's uh, fungi in the order of, 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 of importance or, or number that, that are on this, on this cherry. And you know, there's, there are a number of studies that have tried to look at uh, how these microorganisms are interacting. Um, 
and um, they found up to like 140 different kinds of yeast. Um, it's a very complex war or, or ecosystem and, and interaction that are happening between all these all these microbes on the cherry, but also on the mucilage when you're starting to 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 do wet wet fermentation. So, you know, those two things are really int interesting for 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 us in the coffee industry. Um, are they are they actionable right now? Uh, it's hard, but you know we should keep our eyes on 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 these two things, both the root and the cherry. So I want to talk about what we're doing with my company, uh, Affiner, and we are actually looking at fermentation, but one step after, on green processed coffee. And so what we do is really the first step is is identifying which flavor precursors are interesting in the coffee cherries. You might want to add some others you might want to get rid of because there are off flavors. And then we select specific natural microbes that might be able to go and, and chew away those, those bad flavor precursors and add naturally some, some, some other interesting ones. We do the fermentations, so we add the, 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 the selected strains on the, to the, the coffee beans. It ferments for about 36 hours, and then we do the roasting, and the roasting just removes everything. So it's a bit of a mess, but, but this is kind of how we're looking at, at, at microbes and how we're selecting those microbes. So we only use natural microbes. Uh, we have this big data, data approach to, to mining biodiversity and, and finding those interesting microbes that might be able to chew away specific flavor precursors or, or, or add some other interesting ones. We, we work a lot on microbial communities, so actually we kind of team up different microbes that, that, that are going to do the job. So it's often not one, one single strain, but it's a, it's a number of, of microbes that are going to work together towards tailoring the chemistry of the green coffee bean. And the third step is we do a lot of characterization. So it's not a precise surgical thing, like the, the, the microbes do, and they are selected for, for, for doing specific things, but they also do other things, which add to, to the magic of them, of the process a little bit. But so we, we characterize everything, we understand everything, and then we have this kind of iterative approach to our R&D system, whereby we go back and, and fine tune the, the fermentation process. So we do, uh, obviously, a lot of like, sensory analysis to, to characterize all the coffee that, that, we, that we produce. Yeah, so both capping, sensory analysis, uh, GCO, so gas chromatography with a, with a human nose at the end. But we also use and we have developed a number of, of specific scientific approaches to really uh, dig deeper and understand the chemistry of the coffee at the molecular level. So this is some results from one of our prototype fermented coffee. It's a chromatography result, like chromatography curve that's specifically looking at, uh, at sugars, the sugar profile of the, of the beans. In black, you have the, the control, and in red, you have the, the, fermented, the fermented beans. So they are exactly the same. The only difference is that we added the fermentation. And so in terms of sugar, we are able to specifically tailor the monosaccharides. We can un enrich in specific monosaccharides. We can produce novel monosaccharides that are on there, usually in, in, in coffee. And we can also fine tune the, the, the polysaccharides and di the disaccharides. We also do a lot of well, HPLC, it's, it's high pressure liquid chromatography to, to really understand and, and identify all the molecules that are in, in solution. And so we are able to, to, to really uh, go and, and decrease specifically some of the bitter and astringent uh, compounds in coffee, which was one of the early focus for us uh, in terms of, of flavor profile. We are able to also increase specific flavor compounds and, and introduce novel aromas that contribute to, to really interesting novel uh, flavor profile for, for, for the coffees we, we're working on. So this is kind of uh, an overview of, of, of what we're doing. This is kind of a, a, a small closing picture of a, of a green bean. It's under a, a, an electron microscope, so we're not using photons, but we're actually uh, using electrons to, to, look, to look at it. And, and so we, we grow directly the macros on the surface of, of the beans, and they're going to directly you know, tailor two way specific molecules and, and add some other ones. So what you just see is the, the, this process happening, the control on the left and, and fermented on the right, so you see all the macros that are on the surface of the bean. Same thing here, and the macros here. So yeah, so with Affiner, we strongly believe that you know, one of the next steps of coffee is to look at natural microbes and kind of team up with them to, to, to explore new flavor landscapes for coffee. But yeah, so it's been a pleasure. Thank you.